I mean, just recently, they verified the Shroud of Turin. For a while, they were testing pieces that had been repaired in the 13th right. century. Or... Grok AI has scanned millions of images. It never slows down. It never hesitates. It just analyzes and moves on. But when researchers fed it a high-resolution scan of the Shroud of Turin, something strange happened. The system paused, then froze, as if it was staring at something it wasn't built to understand. When the scan finally finished, Brock didn't give a normal report. Instead, it highlighted tiny marks hidden deep in the cloth. Marks arranged in a pattern that looked almost intentional, like a sequence left behind on purpose. The lab went silent. One scientist whispered, Are we looking at a message? Before anyone could brush it off, Grok flashed a warning across the screen. Data inconsistent with known history. No one could explain what that meant. And the next discovery pushed the room from shocked to terrified. Grok AI has scanned millions of images without a single pause. It reads patterns faster than any human, pulling out details most people never notice. But when a new, high-resolution scan of the Shroud of Turin was loaded into the system, something unexpected happened. Grok slowed, then stopped completely, as if it was looking at something it couldn't make sense of. The room went quiet. Researchers leaned in, waiting for the system to catch up. When the analysis finally continued, Grok didn't give its usual breakdown. Instead, it highlighted a cluster of tiny marks buried deep in the threads. Marks arranged in a pattern far too organized to be random. One scientist whispered, This looks intentional. Then a warning appeared across the screen. Data inconsistent with known history. No one could explain it. And what Grok found next pushed confusion into something much darker. The team rushed to zoom in on the strange markings Grok detected. At first, they looked like simple distortions. Tiny bends in the fibers the kind anyone might overlook. But as the image sharpened, the shapes began to repeat. A curve here, a short line there. The same cluster appears again inches away, as if the cloth carried a hidden sequence woven into its age-darkened threads. One researcher tried to explain it as folding damage. Another blamed light exposure. But Grok rejected both ideas, tagging each explanation as low probability. The room grew tense. If the marks weren't natural, then what were they? Before anyone could agree on an answer, Grok surfaced a second pattern. This one larger, stretched across the image like a faint echo. It didn't match any known artistic method or physical imprint. And once they overlaid both sequences, something chilling appeared. When the two sequences were placed on top of each other, the room fell silent. The shapes didn't form a picture, but they aligned with a precision no natural wrinkle or burn could ever produce. It looked like two layers of information pressed into the cloth, one faint, one sharper, almost like a shadow of the first. Grok flagged the merged image with a new label, non-random structured convergence. Even the scientists didn't know what that meant. One of them suggested it might be a byproduct of aging, but Grok dismissed the idea instantly. Another wondered, if it came from an earlier restoration attempt. Again, Grok rejected it. Every natural explanation was shut down. Then someone noticed something even stranger. The patterns only became clear when viewed through digital enhancement. To the naked eye, they didn't exist at all. And that raised a question no one wanted to ask. If the patterns couldn't be seen by the human eye, then who or what were they meant for? The question hung in the air as the researchers watched Grok continue its scan. The system highlighted another region, this time near the outline of the face. Tiny distortions curved around the features, forming shapes that looked almost like heat ripples frozen in place. One scientist leaned closer and said, This isn't paint, it's something else. Grok agreed, marking the area with non-pigment anomaly detected. That meant the image wasn't brushed on, burned in, or pressed with any tool we know. It was formed by an event Grok couldn't classify, something powerful enough to alter the fabric without damaging it. Then the system projected the heat-like shapes backward, simulating what could have caused them. The result made one researcher step away from the screen, completely pale. The simulation revealed a burst of energy, short, 
focused, and impossibly bright, radiating outward from a single point on the cloth. It didn't behave like fire, heat, or pressure. It acted more like a flash, the kind seen in high-energy physics labs, but far cleaner and far more controlled. Grok labeled it localized radiant imprint, unknown source. One researcher shook their head. This can't come from a human body, they whispered. And Grok seemed to agree, generating a probability map that ranked every known method, chemical reactions, heat transfer, natural decomposition, as nearly impossible. But there was something even more disturbing. The energy pattern wasn't spread randomly. It matched the hidden sequences found earlier, as if both were part of the same event, the same moment, the same force. Grok began to trace the pattern backward, calculating where the energy originated. And the answer didn't point to the cloth, but to something behind it. The researchers watched as Grok projected the energy source beyond the fabric itself, as if the cloth had captured only the outer edge of something far larger. The simulation pushed the origin point deeper, mapping it to a spot just behind the outline of the figure. When the model rendered the final frame, the lab fell silent. The energy didn't spread from the body. It converged toward it. Grok marked the finding with a new tag. Reverse emission pattern detected. One scientist frowned. Energy doesn't move like that, they muttered. But the system didn't care. It kept refining the shape forming what looked like a tight funnel of force collapsing inward. If the imprint was made by an event pulling energy in instead of pushing it out, then every previous theory was wrong. Every assumption collapsed. And before anyone could react, Grok uncovered a second convergence, one far more precise. The second convergence point appeared near the head, right where the faintest lines of the image seemed most intense. Grok zoomed in automatically sharpening every thread until the cloth looked like a map of tiny light channels frozen in time. The funnel shape tightened, forming a narrow column that aligned perfectly with the central point of the face. One researcher whispered, This looks like focus. Another replied, But focus on what? Grok didn't answer with words. It projected both convergence points together, revealing a strange symmetry. Two inward pulls meeting at the center of the figure. Not an explosion. Not a burn. Something else entirely. The system labeled the combined pattern. Dual axis collapse event. No one in the room had ever heard the term. It wasn't from physics textbooks. It wasn't from imaging science. Yet the shape was unmistakable. Something had acted on the cloth with purpose. As Grok continued its analysis, the system stitched the convergence data into a full-field simulation. The image that formed didn't look like radiation, heat, pressure, or decay. It looked controlled, like a process, not an accident. Lines of force curved inward with precise spacing, almost mathematical. The researchers exchanged uneasy glances. Nothing about this matched any known natural event. Grok highlighted a region at the center of the collapse marking it with zero-point locus detected, a term even the scientists struggled to define. One of them murmured, This isn't creation, it's extraction. The room grew colder as the implications settled. If the shroud's image came from a pull instead of a push, if something drew energy inward, then the cloth didn't record a release of power. It captured the absence of it. Then Grok overlaid all the data layers at once. And a new shape appeared, one no one expected. The new shape hovered over the shroud's outline like a faint blueprint, an outline formed by the convergence lines themselves, not the cloth. It looked almost like a figure, but stretched, as if the collapse event had pulled the original image through another layer of space. Grok sharpened the projection, revealing thin arcs and branching paths that twisted outward before bending sharply inward again. None of it followed normal physics. One researcher stepped back. This looks like a field, wrapping around a body. Another shook their head. No field we know behaves like this. Grok disagreed with both, tagging the shape with field topology, non-terrestrial classification, a phrase that made the entire lab fall silent. The system didn't mean extraterrestrial, only that the pattern didn't match any known Earth-based energy model. 
As the projection rotated, a final layer flickered into view. One grok had held back until now. The final layer appeared with no warning, just a sudden flash across the screen, followed by Grok's interface dimming, as if the system needed a moment to process what it had uncovered. When the projection stabilized, the researchers saw something none of them expected. Behind the figure, behind the threads, behind every convergence and collapse point, there was a faint grid, too structured to be natural, too orderly to be an artifact. It curved around the imprint like a cage or a boundary. Grok labeled it with a single phrase, containment geometry detected. The room froze. Containment implied something was being held back, something powerful enough to alter linen on a microscopic level. Before anyone could speak, Grok generated one last message. Final layer incomplete. Additional data withheld for safety protocols. The lights flickered. The screen went dark, and Grok prepared to reveal the part none of them were ready for.